Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I've got a video on cornering tactics in Airsoft. And this video is really fun for me to make because one of my early videos when playing lots of Battlefield 3 was a cornering video I did with X Factor. And it was just kind of fun to sort of notice the differences and similarities between airsoft cornering tactics and video game cornering hey, tactics. Doing? This particular footage right here was recorded at Tax City in Fullerton. Really crazy close quarter match. Uh, there was about 90 people on this field. The field feels like it's designed for maybe about 30 people. So as you can see, there's tons and tons of players all over the place. I'm about to get the drop on four guys. We got four guys in there. Yeah. Now before we get into the specifics of cornering, I want to talk about my Condor Cyclone plate carrier. This thing is a bit smaller than my last plate carrier and it's meant for moving a bit faster, getting around quicker, and just being a little bit more uh, maneuverable and less encumbered by some of the larger plate carriers out there. It can fit about three mag pouches on the front of it and you can actually fit some more mag pouches if you want to use the molly webbing on the side. But again, the whole premise here is to keep it lightweight and maneuverable. I found three mag pouches is more than enough if you're using high cap mags or if you're just playing short games. Now these specific mag patches I have here are made by high speed gear. They're called tacos and I gotta say out of all the mag patches I've tried these ones are by far the fastest and easiest to use. Don't need any bungee on top to remove the tension of the mag patch just keeps the mags securely fastened in there and reinserting mags, reindexing mags is a very very easy process. As you can see these things aren't going anywhere. I've routed my Condor one point gun sling through the shoulder strap so it's very comfortable even when putting a considerable amount of weight on it. The vest removal process is extremely quick and simple. I gotta say I'm very happy with this vest overall and uh, if you guys are at all interested in picking up a vest like this I got mine at airsoftgi.com. I'll leave the links to this uh, gear in the video description. You also notice that I'm wearing some new gloves. I'm using the Mechanics Framework gloves and they have fingerless thumb, index finger, and middle finger. And this allows me to sort of be a little bit more sensitive with my weapon. I can feel mags in my dump pouch. It just makes me uh, a little bit more confident in what I'm doing when I have to grab stuff that I can't look at, like say out of a mag pouch or a dump pouch. Now for the cornering aspect of this video, I'm gonna let Jet take over because I was asking him all these questions about cornering and I figured, you know, why not just let him explain the cornering process in Airsoft. He's a Navy veteran and a 10 year Airsoft veteran. All right, moving into cover. When you move into cover, you want to make sure that the angle from which you could potentially be shot from is covered. So let's say the angle which I would be getting shot from would be my direct front or my direct 12. I'm going to move into the cover from that angle. Once I get into cover, I'm going to do a search and assess, meaning I'm going to look to my left and my right 360 to make sure that I don't miss any enemies that could appear to my left or my right or any of my blind spots. So as I approach the cover, I'm going to look left, look right, all right, now there's nothing. Now I can safely peek all the other angles. Now that we've made it into cover, we can begin peeking for enemies. All right, you want to make sure that you're a muzzle distance away from your, from your cover, so that way you can maneuver better around the cover, as opposed to being tied up on it and then having to back off. All right, so you're going to come up, gun up, and you're going to slowly start pawing the corner, scanning for enemies. One more time. Again, my muzzle is away is I'm a muzzle distance away from my cover. I'm gonna slowly peek out and start searching. Now a good rule of thumb too is not to peek out too far as to expose all of your body to other potential enemies that aren't seen from, from the position that you're at right now. Alright, now let's go over shooting offhand from a left corner when you are a right-handed shooter. Now there's two ways you can approach this. You can shoot you can, you can take your stock and put it into your left shoulder and shoot offhand like this and then peek. Now, the downside of this is what it does is it presents your entire left arm as a huge target. So as I'm coming around the corner, before my gun or my muzzle even gets past the cover, my whole left arm is already exposed. 
an ideal an ideal shooting position would be to just simply switch to your left hand tuck your tuck your elbows in and peek the corner all right let's cover the transition between off uh, strong hand and off hand now the safest way you can go about this is muzzle up so as I come up to the corner muzzle up switch switch shoulders take my firing hand move it up take my trigger take my now what's going to be used trigger hand move it back and peek all right so now let's talk about peeking now there's certain situations to use a peek just peeking around the corner with your head and with your gun up now when you're peeking just around the like around this cover just not gun up or with your head it's basically just kind of an intelligence gathering now maybe I maybe in that particular situation I know that there aren't going to be any immediate enemies in front of me so I don't need to worry about them maybe they're further back or I just have a feel for the situation and I know it's pretty safe so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just quickly move my head out from around the corner now I don't I'm not going to take that full complete angle to expose my full face because that's how I'm going to get shot it's basically just squeezing in about this much angle out of the corner so it's just a quick peek okay now I know where the guys where the guy's at bring my muzzle up hit him and then come back all right so now let's talk about switching up your firing position once you're in cover now behind this van I've got a lot of choices to switch up my firing position so when I first engage I can be standing right here engaging my targets now let's say they peek out and I need to take cover. So now I don't want to fire from the same position because obviously he'll be waiting for me in that position. So from here I can move to a kneeling position and shoot from here. Now if he sees this position I can always switch it up on him again and shoot from a prone position under the vehicle. After that, after that I can even switch it up and shoot from the other side of the tire. All right, let's talk about cover and good cover versus bad cover. What is good cover, what is not good cover? When selecting cover, you wanna make sure that the cover is big enough to hide your body and then some. Don't pick something that's gonna be very tiny or it's just gonna be this odd shape, maybe too skinny for you to hide behind. Also, the location of the cover is a big deal too. You want to make sure that when you're moving to this new bit of cover or finding cover for yourself that you have more cover around you in case you need to move so picking a barrel in the middle of an alleyway or in the middle of a street probably not going to work out the best for you ideally you would want to shoot from buildings specifically buildings with lots of windows and doorways now when shooting from windows and doorways you have the ability to switch up the angles from the windows and doorways against enemy players. So you can shoot from the left side of the window and then transition to the right side of the window, opening up a whole new angle for you on other opposing players. They also provide a dark air to conceal yourself from enemies. Okay, let's talk about elevated positions, particularly shooting from second story buildings or towers. Now what's great about elevated positions is it gives you a great vantage point of the overall battlefield and what's going on all around you. Since you have that high vantage point, you can see you can see a further distance than other other players. Now the downside of this is that you will be exposed to all these players as well. So you have multiple angles to be shot from. So you need to be aware of that when you are on an elevated position. So that wraps it up for this basic cover and cornering tutorial. I wanna give Jed a big shout out for taking the time to help me make this tutorial. Uh, I learned a lot in the process. I hope you guys did too. His channel is linked in the video description. Also, if you're at all interested in picking up that plate carrier or taco mag pouches, I love those taco mag pouches. They're freaking awesome. I've linked those in the video description. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.